What is up my disciples, Coding Ahmed here. In today's video, I'm gonna be describing a cryptocurrency project that I personally contributed to in an open source fashion. I'm also gonna be describing the impetus for why I decided to do it, how you at home can do it as well, and walking you through several commands that you can now issue with my open source contribution. Now, what is Monero if you're new to this channel? Well, what Monero is is a privacy-preserving cryptocurrency. It focuses on obfuscating who the sender and receiver of transactions are and hiding the amounts that they exchange between each other. Now, I'm not gonna go all out and say Monero is fully anonymous. There's a whole series called Breaking Monero, which focuses on different threat models and the different attacks that somebody can perform on somebody that has Monero. But I will say it's as close as possible to an anonymous currency as we can currently get in today's open marketplace. So why do I choose to contribute to Monero? Well, I'm somebody that would like to see the world move in the direction of individual liberty and personal responsibility. Now, regardless of where, where you want to see the world move, there's really three primary ways you can enact your change, whether political or social. The first is through the legislative body in whatever country you live under. That means enacting political change by amassing a certain amount of votes and running on some sort of party platform. Now, personally, I find this the weakest mode of enacting political change because for me, it involves an inherent contradiction. That contradiction is attempting to rid people of political power or the shackles of political power rather by trying to amass political power over them yourself. The second means of political organization and enacting change is through grassroots organizing. And oftentimes that involves protesting. Now when somebody protests, they protest around a controversial cultural issue or economic issue. What ends up happening is that two camps form, one camp is for, one camp is against. They end up receding into their own political circles, fortifying their own existing views and biases, and nothing ends up actually happening. The third mode of political change, which I personally ascribe to, is called agorism, or the agora. Now, what is the agora coding, Jesus? Well, I'm glad you asked. The agora is just a Greek word for the marketplace. The marketplace is the only place that we can all satisfy our own subjective needs and wants without crushing the other party via violence or coercion. Now, the marketplace may include activities that you find detestable, but that's the beauty of the marketplace. It is the voluntary exchange of goods and services between consenting adults. An example of that might include drug trafficking, arms trafficking, illegal immigration, 3D printing, peaceful parenting, and even things as uncontroversial in today's world as entrepreneurship, which is illegal in some countries around the world. All right, Coding Jesus, how do you personally participate in the Agora? Well, while I may look like a drug or arms trafficker, I can guarantee you that I am not. The way I choose to participate in the Agora is first seceding from the state. I do not vote. I do not contribute politically. While the state may have guns and men, the state cannot overcome a rebellious majority, let alone a rebellious minority of black marketeers and counter-economists. Personally, the way I proactively contribute to the Agora is through code and my contribution to Monero. I would like to, to develop libraries and applications on Monero that free people of the shackles of both public and private authoritarianism. In today's world, especially in 2021, we're at a crossroad. We can either use technology to enhance each other's lives, to increase our standard of living, and to make living with each other much more easy and harmonious, or we can choose to harness technology to track each other, to attack each other, to violate each other's privacy, to enslave each other even, and to generally degrade each other's standards of living. It was Orwell that put it best. He said the future of the human race is a boot stomping on the human face forever. And by contributing to Monero, I'm hoping to make it such that that boot never lands on the human face. All right, guys, that is why I decided to contribute to Monero. Let's go ahead and jump to the computer where I'll be showing you my contribution to the Monero, to the Monero ecosystem as well as a couple of commands that you can issue with the library I've written. All right, guys, right now we're looking at Monero's official website, www.getmonero.org. My code contribution lies under resources and developer guides. And if you scroll to the very bottom in this libraries and helpers section. Now I laid an Easter egg in my previous video, but none of you have picked up on it, that I wrote this C-sharp Monero RPC client. Now what does this do? Well, it is a wallet and daemon client that allows you to interface with the Monero blockchain, excuse me, with the Monero blockchain. Okay, let's actually take a look at this code contribution. <clears throat> so if you click on it, you'll be taken to GitHub. It's an open source repository that I built under the Monero ecosystem. 
The Monero ecosystem is a collection of projects that sole focus is improving the Monero ecosystem, which involves building applications on top of Monero, building libraries and helpers, etc., etc. Okay, let's actually take a look at some of the code here. Now, I'm going to be showing you guys a demo of how to use this library in just a sec, but let's take a look at some of the code. So, if we go to utilities, what do we have here? An error guard, price utilities, utilities to format prices for Monero. There is like a pick an arrow, which is the lowest denomination of Monero. There's a mega arrow, which is, I think this is one, two, three, a million Monero. Um, let's take a look at wallet. So, under wallet, I have the interface for the Monero wallet client and the wallet client as well. Let's take a look at the interface here real quick. So these are all the commands that you can issue to the Monero wallet client to the Monero wallet with this wallet client. See transfer async, get height, set account tag and description async, um, get address book, etc. etc. There's also some plain old data structures that I have here, which are just simply collections of properties. So recipient, recipient is made of address and amount, amounts and unsigned long. Um, Let's take a look at transfer priority. Transfer priority is an enumeration. You have your default, unimportant, normal, elevated, and priority transfer priorities. And I made sure that all this code is self-documented, so it's commented. So a priority transfer is, or you'll be paying rather, a 166 times the normal fee on a priority transfer. Let's take a look here quickly at responses. So these are responses you get back from the actual uh, RPC. So let's just see here. Export multi-sig info response. You get back a string that's information. If you want to know what this information string actually means, you can go ahead and check the documentation. All right, guys, let's actually spin up a Monero node and write some code to show you guys how you can use this library. All right, guys, so in front of me, I'm looking at a C Sharp solution that is currently using C Sharp 8 and running on .NET Standard 2.1 and above, meaning I'm currently actually on .NET Core 3.1. Okay, now why did I bring up .NET Standard 2.1? Well, because my library is only compatible with .NET Standard 2.1 and above. So let's actually take a look at how, if you open a C -sharp, C Sharp solution, you can use my library. We right click on the project, we go to Manage NuGet Packages, and as you can see here, I already browsed for it, my given package called Monero.client. It currently sits at 2.51 thousand views, uh, not views, downloads rather and we go ahead and click install. As you can see here, my name, Agoras Actions, right there. And what do we get here? We got an error that quickly disappears, and we can go ahead and see that our package, Monero.client 1.0.1.6, is available under this project as a package. So let's go ahead and program, and let's start seeing what we can do here. So let's like and subscribe, and let's actually start connecting to the Monero blockchain and communicate with the daemon. Now, I'm going to be instantiating a daemon client via a factory method on the Monero daemon client class. And in the background, I already did start my own Monero node, which, you know, it's not content for this video, but I do have a Monero node running in the background right now. So I can go to using var, let's just actually make it more explicit Monero daemon client, node client equals await. Monero daemon client create async and you can pass in a custom URI to connect to some node out in the ether or in this case because it's on my local host I'm going to be using this enumeration Monero network mainnet which specifies the default local host and port schema Alright, let's make sure this is on one line so it's easier to read and now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and get the connections or the peers that we're connected to, rather, and iterate through them and examine what they are, who they are, etc. So we can do something like try. We're going to catch every exception that's thrown. Hopefully nothing's thrown currently. And we're just going to print it to screen for the sake of simplicity. Now let's get all the connection objects. So connections equals await node client dot get connections async. We can pass in a cancellation token, but I won't be doing that. Then we can iterate over this for var connection in connections. And let's go ahead and print out the results of this connection or print out information on this connection. Now, what does this do? Console.writeLine and I'm passing in a connection. Well, since connection is an object, it has a two string method. 
And in the library, I overrode the toString method of connection to provide some useful information as to the connection object. Let's go ahead and put a breakpoint here so we can inspect the connection object as well. And we will go ahead and click run. Now, hopefully you can see the screen that's running. If not, I will post a screenshot of it a little later. So right now we've hit the breakpoint. We've gotten our connections. You see we're connected to 12 peers. The count is 12. And let's take a look at what connection object we're looking at right now. So as you can see here, this is the override of the two string method. It is the host and the port and the state in which this other node is in, the other node we're connected to. If I look at this connection object, as you can see here, my library deserializes a lot of very valuable information. Peer ID, port, is local host, is local ID, host, the height, current upload, current download, connection ID, how long it's been connected, et cetera, et cetera. If we go ahead and print this, what you should see is that two string overload, which is this right here, 90.198.41, blah, 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 appearing on your console. All right, hopefully you guys have a better understanding of how to use this library, what's kind of available in this library via this very, very small and very limited code example. All right, guys. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to help contribute to this library, I will put a link in the description box below. I'm open to all contributions. Smash the like button. Like I said, subscribe and share this video far and wide, guys. I also have a Patreon link in the description box below if you want to become a patron. I have a Discord link if you want to join the Discord. And I also have a Calendly link and my email if you'd like to contact me one-on-one -on -one for a private consulting session with me, Coding Jesus. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Cheers.